The National Environment Management Authority has over the last few weeks been enforcing evictions from wetlands. You must have watched wailings of people, especially in the Luigi wetland, as bulldozers from the National Environment Management Authority brought down the buildings. The big question is, has NEMA been applying this eviction from wetlands selectively? Contradicting statements, the Minister for Finance, Planning and Economic Development says investors that have built factories in wetlands will not be evicted. What's the difference between a shanty development in Luigi and a swanky factory in another wetland? My guest on NBS First of this evening is Dr. Barrega Akankwasa, Executive Director at the National Environment Management Authority. Welcome to NBS First of. Thank you very much. A very good evening to our listeners and viewers. My name is Charles Mwangushampagi and this is NBS First Off. Let's begin with your evictions in Luigi. I want to You've seen the wailings of the lowest level of Ugandans at the bottom of the economic rank out of your actions. Explain why, Luigi. Why now? Why them? Thank you very much, uh, Charles. Um, it's sad seeing uh, people inconvenienced. Um, it, it's, it's not nice displacing people who, who are already settled. Um, but as you know, we are required by law to enforce the law. Mm -hmm. So it is, uh, it's like police, you know, um, arresting a criminal. A criminal is a person also who has a life, who has livelihoods. So or, or a court sentencing uh, a, an expecting mother to jail. It, it is very sad and uh, we, we commensurate with the affected people. But if we do not take this move uh, to remove them, the costs are much higher for the very people, but also for other people. For example, you saw what happened in Kenya recently. We lost uh, 300 uh, lives. People were swept by floods. So whereas it is sad to inconvenience people, to remove them from their shelters, it could have been worse, for example, if we got a flooding which can claim their lives. So we, we, we need to do this painfully, uh, however painful it is, but it is for the common good of the very people who are inconvenienced, but also other Ugandans. What, Rubiji, what good is in it for them? Rubiji ecosystem, hmm. as you can see, is very, very critical for Kampara, for Wachiso, uh, for Entebbe, because it's a big uh, uh, water catchment area for the Kampara metropolitan area, but is also a buffer uh, for lakes and rivers around us. And so without conserving Rubiji, you are condemning uh, all these people that stay in the Kampara metropolitan area and beyond because the wetland mm -hmm. uh, feeds into other wetlands. You are condemning them not to have access to clean water. You are condemning them not to have filtration of pollutants which eventually will uh, go into fish that we shall eventually eat and then we are condemning our citizens into eating uh, fish laden with heavy metals but we are also condemning uh, decimation of other biodiversity for example the grey crowned crane or mm -hmm. our national bird 
and so many other lives that call uh, wetlands just, home. Just, but just, most just, importantly, <laughs> before I lose the point, mm -hmm. most importantly, the city has industries. Mm -hmm. Now, in a, a capital city like Kampara and Wachiso, you have more fumes, you have more emissions than you have in the villages. So you need wetlands to absorb uh, these emissions for the good of the people. So you have climate amelioration, but the most importantly, air quality improvement and a host other functions, cultural and economic functions. So speak, we must uh, Dr. save Kankwasa, the wetlands. Yes. Dr. Kankwasa, speak to that woman, the picture you must have seen in the newspapers and social media, who apparently had traveled up country, she'd lost somebody, only to come back and find she had no home to go back to. There is a woman that I've also seen on, uh, we've run on TV in the news, who has a child with disability, says they built a home there, they bought a piece of land, built a home with a husband, they have six children, and the husband later abandoned them because, partly because of that child with a disability. Mm. And, and explain to me how this is important for them. Uh, Charles, your actions are important for them. Yes, Charles, like I said, um, there is nobody who can be happy with inconveniencing other people. But if we cannot enforce the law, then we shall have anarchy and everything will be in a disarray. Now, it's unfortunate that people were given notices as far as 2021, as far as 2016, to prepare themselves so that they can live peacefully without all these inconveniences. But as you know, uh, despite reminders, despite written notices, despite uh, continuous, con continued awareness, uh, including on this very show, mm -hmm. you hosted me here last year, doing the same sensitization and warning people to live, despite all this, people have not uh, heed the call to live peacefully. So we had no choice but to apply uh, uh, inconvenience in order to have them uh, live if for you, the benefit of them and the general population. You use the word inconvenience. Yes. You said you issued notices yes. from as way back as 2016. Correct. Through 2021. Correct. How many people are you displacing? Are you aware? The, everyone who is within the wetland precincts. Do you have a number? I can cross check the number, but yeah. they are beyond 300 uh, households. 300 households yes. representing how many individuals? Uh, they could go to 1,000. About 1,000. Uh, in terms of people. In what radius, what area of coverage is this particular Rubiji eviction? It is going to cover the whole of uh, Rubiji ecosystem. We have a map, a wetland mm -hmm. map, mm -hmm. which is a historical map with the clear boundaries. So it's not restricted in one area or Senaku, Wade, or Nansa, no, 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 no. We follow the boundaries of the ecosystem. So that's the boundary that uh, guides the enforcement. And we have issued them notices they are aware. We have uh, talked to them. Uh, we have uh, put uh, announcements on radios. Even now they are still running. But despite all of this, uh, some people uh, do not pay heed to live peacefully. We've had run-ins, you, you chase people today, after three months, after one month, they come back. Mm. Uh, we, we removed the people, for example, last year, 2021, but even in this very area as well, they were removed, they, they, they have had to come back. So it's like a cat and a mouse chase, but our strategy now is to ensure that when you are removed, we restore the place by blocking the water channels, removing debris, and doing enrichment planting of rhizomes to do assisted recovery so that uh, the wetland recovers faster to continue doing its work of flood amelioration, for example, biodiversity conservation, uh, water filtration and pollution control, among others. For, for, for a viewer who has not had the benefit to look at the map, which I hope actually you'll provide and uh, we can be able to play um, uh, in, in, in the course of this show. Yes. Um, could you just give us a rundown of the affected areas? You have talked about Nakuwade, you've talked about um, areas of uh, Nansana. Nansana. How far does Saint it go? Mm. Uh, Rubiji extends to uh, areas of uh, 
Busega roundabout, uh, areas of Nakuade, Sentema roundabout, Nansana, Ganda, uh, Naluma, uh, up to Kawara, up to Kawara, uh, Chiumbiro, uh, Navisasiro, Bwaise, yeah, those are the areas. All those areas yes. are under the Luigi ecosystem. Yes, but if lifting... we talk about Nansana, we are not talking about the whole of Nansana, mm. but parts of it. Mm. So people should not get scared that when we say Nansana, we are talking about evicting people in Nansana. No, no. no. Well, if you're in the a wetland in Nansana, Nansana... It's the people who are within the wetland boundaries mm. in Nansana, in Nakuade, in Nabisasiro, in uh, uh, Buaise. Dr. Kankwasa, the enforcement of the law, which you say you're doing, should apply to everyone within the ecosystem. Correct. There's been criticism of you and your team of evicting some and leaving others. In Nakuade, where you've been operating, there's been accusations. You left a police station standing. You left a fuel station standing. You left uh, some other infrastructure standing. Why? Um, there, there are different categories of infrastructure um, that is not yet down. It doesn't mean that uh, it may not go down. First of all, the operation is still going on. So we cannot conclude uh, beyond reasonable doubt that there is anybody who has been left so far. Mm. But to respond to you, there are issues which have been raised on Stabex, mm. a on fuel station. On, yes, fuel station, mm. uh, on a factory, and then the police station. Now, uh, some of these areas, apart from the police station, received the approval of NEMA in the past. Uh, the petrol station uh, ha has certificates issued by NEMA in 2017, in 2011, and 2020. Th this is in the past. Uh, the factory also, same thing, the, the, it received the uh, certificates uh, previously. Now, when the same institution issued these certificates, uh, the same institution is a stopped, cannot come tomorrow and say, demolish. So that becomes a challenge. And uh, uh, the information I've found on record, because I was not in Nema that time, uh, is that the fuel station, for example, the reason why it was approved was because uh, the place on which it is standing used to be a material uh, yard for the construction of the road and it was a fully uh, converted area and therefore was no longer having any uh, recoverable properties of wetland and that's why it was um, approved then. So I cannot go uh, to enforce where law has not been broken. I wouldn't have locus uh, to enforce against someone who has not breached the law. That's what people are calling uh, uh, selective uh, enforcement, but in our view it is not selective enforcement. Because selective enforcement would mean that they have committed a the crime, they have also breached, and you have left them. Let, let, let's assess the criminality of the people you are evicting uh, in a moment. But I just think, want to read from uh, the long title to the National Environment Act number 5 of 2019. An act to repeal, replace, and reform the role relating to environmental management in Uganda, to provide for the management of the environment, of the environment for sustainable development, to continue the National Environment Management Authority as a coordinating, monitoring, regulatory, and supervisory body for all activities relating to environment, to provide for emerging environmental issues, including climate change, the management of hazardous chemicals and biodiversity offsets, to provide for strategic environment assessment, to address environmental concerns arising out of petroleum activities and midstream operations, to provide for the management of plastics and plastic produ products, to establish the Environmental Protection Force, to provide for enhanced penalties for offenses under the Act, to provide for procedure and administrative matters and for related matters. This the, the law under which you are enforcing this current addiction. We, but we'll pick it up in a yeah. very short moment after commercial break. <laughs>